hello everyone uh, happy new year to everyone and uh, i hope you have started on your on, on a good note so um, in this video i will show you that how we can send push notifications from uh, business central using the cloud messaging from uh, firebase so before uh, starting this uh, session, let me give you a very quick uh, background. So push notifications is something which is not new to the programming world, right? Uh, we get push notification every time uh, in the form of, you know, whenever you get an Outlook email, you get a notification uh, popping up, uh, popping out from your uh, right screen, screen's right bottom. And, you know, you say snooze, uh, you know, dismiss or maybe delete. Some kind of actions are also available there. Now similarly, you get those uh, push notifications on your mobile as well, or, or maybe your uh, uh, iPads or maybe your iPhones and all uh, in the form of app or maybe a web uh, push notification. There can be different form of uh, those notifications as well. Apparently, as of now, business, with Business Central, we don't have that uh, mechanism available yet, but uh, who knows? Microsoft is definitely working hard to um uh, you know to evolve the product and uh, we are getting some great features uh, out of the product from uh, last couple of years so maybe the functionality will be introduced in future but uh, till then uh, it's part of a r&d project that i have been working during the break i got uh, with, with with the new new year holidays so i thought let's try to share this knowledge with uh, everyone so before i begin uh, i'll just quickly introduce myself um, rishab shukla working as a managing consultant with Dolly Technologies. Uh, that's my Git profile. And uh, having said that, that's my YouTube channel, mostly active here. Uh, try to answer the queries that I get from the viewers and, uh, you know, feel free to uh, put up a question. I'll try to answer them as much as, uh, as soon as uh, possible. And apart from that, I'm not very much active here, but uh, that's also my blog uh, website. So every video that I make on the channel, I also put it on the blog website as well, just in case people uh, get a response to this. And also one of the reasons is that I started this website before I started the channel. So I'm just keeping it up for now. All right, so uh, I will just uh, show you an example like I always do, and then we'll come to the session. Okay, before I do that, I'm struggling a bit with my internet today as well, but uh, let's see. So before I do that, I'll just try to do one thing and that's very important because it's a recorded session. So focus assist basically, you know, turns off all the notifications and uh, hard luck for me, uh, notifications is something I have to show you guys today, right? Okay came up this and all right so let's take an example okay now i have a uh, one user working on a business central environment that is a user with the name rishabh shukla okay and there is another user of business central who is working on the different browser and that user is going to be on this one let's take an example he's not open his browser he's working on something entirely different for now uh, i have opened google as part of a screen Okay, so consider that browser as a different machine, as a different user. Okay, now every time you go to your sales order and this user tries to open this order and tries to, you know, send a, a approval request. Okay, so what happens in this case? So let me cancel this one first. Perfect. So when I send this approval request, this approval request goes to that machine and, uh, you know, uh, as a Outlook uh, and user will get notified eventually if the Outlook notifications are configured, it's going to get notified by Outlook. And, uh, you know, if you have Power Automate in place, you'll get entirely different atmosphere of uh, of the notification. That's all, in, uh, all which is already in place, right? Now consider an example that user doesn't have, a, is not that much active with the technology. Okay, and I said I'm not that much active with the technology. Let's consider an experienced guy who's good in the domain but not good with the technology. Okay, and uh, he's not, or maybe take, let's take another example that could be a bad one. Now, this one is a different one. Now, this is a, uh, he's a user of a management, he's, he's not actively working with Business Central like on a day to day activity. He just logs in, approves the request, and logs off. Poof, or maybe 
a different scenario could be that he just goes into the system to see the MIS reports, right? Now, in that case, he has to get notified, right? Um, again, Outlook could be one of the things, but uh, this example shows you uh, a simple way he's going to get notified with push notifications, okay? So I did send approval request and there you go. That this basically a pop-up notification or, or maybe a push notification to be perfect. Uh, and this notification, you can see the browser on top of it. It's on Google Chrome. So Google Chrome is the browser of the different user, right? So uh, it says sales order approval for a data map corporation. Uh, total amount of order is blah, blah, blah. So a random corporation is the customer name on this order. And if I click on this, it's going to open Chrome and it's going to open and it should open that sales order. There it is, right? So the, I mean, uh, Outlook is also one of the way, I'm not saying that uh, we should remove Outlook in place. Uh, it's a perfect feature. It should be in place. It has a lot of other functionalities too, but you know, give user a better experience, right? Uh, and notify him in, in a minute, right? And the best part is it doesn't matter if the machine is, switch, uh, machine is turned off. Whenever he logs in or whenever he uh, switch on the machine, uh, he's going to it's going to fetch the notification and going to show the pop-up at once okay uh, and that's that's the beauty of uh, push notification um, and and there are other examples too and uh, I'll show you one very quickly and then I'll come back to the situation where I'll show you how I did this okay <coughs> so I'll go to customers on this one process and push notification now this is basically a custom page i have created and uh, don't go with all the parameters just try to understand the title and the message okay so it says a customer uh, customer card it's going to be the title and then uh, that is going to be a message okay a customer card is created uh, for a new customer okay now do this send notification there you go now that other user is again getting this message if i click on this it is going to open business central to that customer okay there you go <coughs> now implications or use cases can be way further now let's try to understand what is happening here okay so uh What's happening here is when I click on send notification or when I try to send an approval request, Business Central is invoking Firebase and uh, Firebase is uh, is basically a mechanism or an, I'll not say mechanism is responsible for sending that push notification to that uh, user. How? Uh, so whenever I send a, a notification message to Firebase, I send a token ID. Now consider this token ID as a unique user ID. Okay, so if I want to send it to a different user, it, it is going to be a different token ID. Okay, I'll show you how we can create one and uh, there could be logic that you can store uh, token IDs as an isolated storage within Business Central. Uh, I just try to keep the videos video as simple as possible. Don't push too much functionality in, in you know, just, just try to demonstrate something. Okay, so let's consider token as a different user ID. Okay, so you have SIDs with the, the user IDs, like in a similar way, they have token IDs for different users. Okay, so Firebase will take this information. Uh, it's going to take the title, take the message. Uh, there are certain other uh, parameters too as well that I have sent. I'll show you that as well. Like the URL, when you click on that, how is it opening the uh, that particular customer card or that particular sales order? That's that's going to be something I will be explaining you in further uh, later in this video. But the main responsibility is that it's going to take this token ID. Now with this token ID, Firebase understand that I have to send this push notification to this token. Okay, so when I say this token, it means that user in a very simple language. Okay, um, and, and that's how Firebase does all this thing. Okay, easy, right? Now, uh, I'll, I'll show you the mechanism how I did that. So to understand this, uh, I'll take you to a different screen now. Just Google, uh, you know, Firebase and uh, just create a free login. I logged in with my blog account. Uh, feel free to do it with a different account. And it's a free login. You can, uh, and don't quote me on this, they might charge at some point, okay? 
So once you create a login, you can create further projects. Okay, uh, just click on Add Project, and uh, you have to give your project a name. Okay, so once you do that, uh, you know what? Let me show you one. Uh, let's say push notification video. All right. So once you do that, it's going to give your project a unique uh, identifier name. Okay. So you click on continue and uh, it's, it, it will tell you that Google Analytics is also part of uh, things that you can do. Again, Firebase is just not for sending cloud messaging. It, it does a lot of things, guys. Uh, and I'm, to be honest, I'm not particularly fam familiar that much to the product, but I just went into cloud messaging and in app messaging, and I, I just noticed that that's something we should definitely explore, be exploring, okay? So for now, just disable, enable uh, cloud analytics and do create project. It's going to take a while. And once it is done, we will get the idea. So while it is happening, what you have to do in parallel uh, is that you create a blank folder in your uh, VS Code, okay? And try to open that VS Code from that uh, particular uh, drive, okay? Um, Okay, and there is one more uh, uh, prerequisite that you have to do. You have to install Node on your machine because at some point we are going to use it. Okay, just just Google Node.js and just install it. Okay, it's, it's just flat installation. Don't have to you know, you know do any uh, next level of uh, complex configuration for that. Let's try to keep things very simple for now, guys. Okay, so the project is created, and I'll say continue. So once I do continue, I'll get a very nicely articulated window saying, uh, you know, push notification videos. That's the name of my project. And, uh, um, you know, uh, I can get started by doing several things. Okay. Now, one of them is basically cloud messaging. Now, before jumping to this section, it's very important that we, first of all, uh, create those uh, essentials to, you know, work uh, to use cloud messaging. Okay. And again, there's a very uh, nicely described videos available on YouTube, with, which you can also use for uh, making your cloud messaging app. So before all this, just go to this navigation pane, click on this settings icon, go to project settings. Now, once you go to project setting, there are certain things which are very, very essential for you. Okay. First thing, that's your project name, that's your project ID, and that's your project number. You might use it in future, but not for now. Okay. Uh, in case you have a support email, I want to extend it. Uh, for now, it's going to be your default account. Our uh, information is basically on the cloud messaging part. Okay, and that's we are that's what we are basically going to use. Um, Okay, yeah, sorry, my bad. So we will go here and I'll just go back to my project. In my case, what we are going to do is that we are going to create a app. So within uh, your uh, platform of Firebase, you have to mention that what kind of app that you are going to use. So in my case, it's going to be a web app. And uh, so in one project, you can create as many apps you want to. Okay, so in this case, we'll say BC push notification. Okay. Uh, just take this as well uh, because we are going to use the Firebase uh, hosting. Then click on register app. Okay. And then it's going to take a while. Now, once you do that, it's going to give you certain uh, parameters that you might want to use in your app. But before uh, using them, let's let's go back to the VS Code and let's go and understand what uh, I have done here. Okay, 
So in your VS Code, you have to uh, create a blank folder and try to open that uh, folder from your uh, VS Code. It's a simple practice. We always do that. Okay. Now don't get confused with all these files that I'm getting here. Uh, you will also get them at certain point. But for now, let's create a blank folder with the let's say public name or something like that. You know, and then uh, you know you you just uh, wait for further instructions. Now on the terminal, first thing after installing Node, the first command they had that you have to run, and I'll just uh, keep it this way so that you also get an idea what I'm trying to say. So I open on my Notepad. So on the terminal, you have to run the command in the sequence. Okay. Uh, first things first, that you have to install the Firebase uh, tools. For doing that, you need to have the uh, run this command npm install global and these are Firebase, Firebase tools. Once you do that, you have a node modules folder. In my case, I have also installed uh, node from the scratch, so I have also have another other folders as well, as well. But very important is this folder. Once you do that, you will get all these folders. Okay. Now, the next thing is that you do a Firebase login. You run this command. And I have also run it at certain point. I'll show you when. So that is that. And uh, um, 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 yeah, there you go. Uh, at this point, I was running the Firebase login. So you don't jump directly to Firebase init because in the sessions it says that Firebase init uh, to run the Firebase init command. But uh, you have to run Firebase login first because uh, unless you log in to Firebase from your terminal, you won't be able to use the init command. Okay, so run Firebase space login. Once you do that, it's going to uh, pop out on a window on, on a web browser. You have to just log in with your Firebase account. It takes all the credentials from here. Very easy. Okay. Now, once you do that, the next thing that you have to do uh, is that you have to run the Firebase init command. So you can see here at this point, I was running Firebase login. It says allow Firebase to local uses all this information. Just say yes. Uh, that's basically the URL. It, it opens automatically, but if it is not getting open and the pop-ups are blocked in your uh, browser, just click on this uh, link. It should be able to get to that account. So now it says success log into this. And then uh, I just try to make sure that I have logged in. So it says Firebase login. I try to run this command again. It shows that we are already logged in with this account. So next thing is that you have to run Firebase init command. Now, once I run Firebase init command, it is going to ask me certain questions. So it's going to say, are you about to initialize the project in this directory? So I, uh, that's why I said that, uh, you know, uh, I want to start uh, just create a folder and then open uh, VS code on that folder. So that folder is basically going to be your uh, uh, push notification app project. Okay. And then uh, next thing would be, it's going to ask certain question. Are you ready to proceed? Blah, blah, blah. Most important, the only question which is which I seem was important is this one. Which Firebase feature do you want to use? And uh, in this case, you have to use uh, this option. Uh, hosting configure files to uh, for Firebase hosting. Okay. And there you can see there I have selected it. Okay, so don't go, don't get confused with all these options uh, in my left screen because I got errors while running this command, and uh, that is the reason why I've wrote it down somewhere so that in future, or maybe for if you guys are trying with with me, you won't get these errors. Okay, now if you are able to run this command successfully, you should be getting this message right here: Firebase initialization complete. Okay, now don't run the Firebase serve command for now. Okay, and let's try to understand what we have done so far. So if I maximize this window, after running this, you should be having certain files within your system. One of them is going to be 404 HTML. That's your uh, error HTML file. Then another one is going to be your index.html. And uh, there are going to be certain Firebase specific files. Don't get confused with them. Let's let's keep it very simple, guys, for now. Okay, let's. Uh, all the files which are getting auto-generated are the files which are getting auto-generated. That's it. Next thing that you have to do is that don't do anything with the 404 HTM, uh, HTML file. You don't really have to take care of errors and all those things for now. Okay, we'll get into that part uh, as and when you're trying to do complex solutions. There's another file which is called index.html. In your case, it might have some, uh, you know, uh, pre-written information of uh, index.html, index but 
just remove it and in this case what i have done and uh, this is where we are also going to uh, connect to the video that uh, the link that i was showing you okay so this was the first command uh, npm install firebase in this case you have to run the global command that i have shown now once you are done with that uh, I'll, I'll use this one right okay so uh, just create a very simple html page okay and guys who are with the nav background a uh, typical nav dev developer and i can completely understand if they are not familiar to javascript and html don't worry about that just just uh, keep the format as it is and uh, you know just keep going with that okay we are going to use the html page for one purpose and uh, that's because we have a limitation with uh, business central for now at least okay so uh, we are going to create this page uh, and in this page first things first we have to load certain scripts so these scripts are basically the scripts which are going to be used to run the firebase app okay so you can either copy and or paste the link directly so that's one of the links g static uh, firebase 18.10.0 firebase app.js and then another one is going to be firebase messaging.js okay now if you move to your right uh, sorry to your left you will also see this url right here okay it has a different version but yeah you'll get the idea okay so you have to add this files in uh, add the script in your html file these are needed script to uh, run the firebase or use the firebase library if there's within your js file and uh, html okay now post that it's a very simple html i just said push notification as a heading and uh, there is a button and uh, on the click of a button it's going to run a function i'll take you to that function as well and <coughs> let's see what it basically does so if i say bc for that's basically that page uh, i was talking about okay so if i uh, try to connect the dots here so that push notification is this part that uh, button of subscribe is this part okay and uh, your token will be shown that is this line and once i click on it uh, it says a message and then it shows this token to me so that is basically uh, this line okay now there's one more thing that i have done and uh, that's because I, I have added a, a JavaScript file and the reason for that is because I have to run certain logic behind the click of this button and that is where the actual magic happens, right? Now, consider an example that you are a user and uh, as a user, you when you log into any website or somewhere, you might be getting an option on the very top left of your, of your screen saying, do you, want to, uh, do you want to allow this site to send you notifications, okay? So that is basically the website is allow asking you for a permission. Okay. And uh, once you say allow, it's going to generate that token in the backend for you for your service provider. Okay. Or uh, sorry, not service provider, the service worker. Now, and let's try to understand the concept of service worker. I'll try to explain in, uh, in brief. So uh, you can understand that every time Firebase sends a notification to a token, even if you are not working on that machine, you get that notification. Or if you are logged off, uh, when you uh, log back in, you get those notification. And the service worker is the only reason behind that. So every time when you allow your notification, it basically uh, runs a service worker. And that job of that service worker to, is to keep a watch on the incoming notification or pull the, income, pull the notification from the you know, Firebase account if there are any, okay? <clears throat> so that is that is basically what service worker is. So every time you do allow, you basically generate a token for service worker. Now service worker basically gets the note, uh, gets activated with that uh, token ID and it basically sends that information back to Firebase. Now every time Firebase gets a notification from Business Central in, the, in our case, it sends that notification to that token. And when it gets to that token, it's basically service worker, which basically, uh, it gets the notification on the token and shows it to you. Okay. Uh, I hope you guys are clear with that. Um, uh, and uh, again, uh, guys who are familiar with Firebase and push notification, I'm definitely sure they get the idea. They can explain it better than me, but uh, guys who are with nav background and uh, they're not very familiar with that, just try to understand that's 
how you as a user as an end user you have to generate your token and this is going to be your user id for the firebase note or for the push notifications okay and if you try to connect the dots this is the exact same token id I'm, i was uh, putting on in in this uh, uh, token field when i was trying to send that message okay all right so that is that um, now let's let's see what what else we need to do i'll expand this form as well now in app.js um, you have to write certain uh, commands as well so if i go back to the firebase website so you can see here uh, you know you have to uh, just copy and paste this code let's copy this code and paste it in your app.js file from here to here okay just just simply do that and try to understand what this code is doing so it says var firebase and it's basically a j object and uh, we are getting all this information to it so this api key is basically the key uh, which basically segregates your account on firebase because there could be another app as well running on the same platform and tries to send notifications okay but the service worker gets uh, the token for your app and it sends the uh, notification only relevant to your app. So that's why you have the app ID, then you have the app auth domain name. Okay, so this information is always available on your uh, uh, on your Firebase login. If you forget that, don't worry about it. Just keep it, uh, it's always available in your account. Okay, you can copy it, paste it anytime. And that's your project ID. I've shown you in the beginning how you get that. And that's your message sender ID. That's basically your uniqueness. The sender is going to be the uniqueness. Okay. And that's your app ID. Okay. Don't change anything here. It's very important you keep the way it is. And then there is a command which says Firebase initialize app. Okay. Now you write this code here. And you also write this code in the service worker JavaScript file. Uh, so just create a file with this name. Okay. And in this file, just uh, copy and paste the entire line from here to here. And on the top, uh, you have to write the command import script and it's the import script is going to import those two uh, JS file that we are using in our index.html as well. Okay, so the reason, reason why we are doing it because every time when the uh, service worker gets loaded, it's basically going to run this thing in the background. Okay, it try, tries to initialize itself. Okay, and you are not always going to run the index.html file, right? So in that case, is the job of service worker to get uh, to initialize the Firebase on behalf of you. Okay, so yeah, that's that's basically the service worker dot uh, js. Now there was another thing I was showing you there, and that's the click of the subscriber button. So when you click on that button, it basically gives you uh, calls to this function. Now. If you are familiar with JavaScript code, uh, then you should be getting an idea what it's doing here. Uh, I've taken a notification uh, data type and I'm requesting permission. So this is basically the line which gives you that pop-up that I was talking about, that uh, do you want to allow this site to give you a notification, okay? Uh, if you allow it, then uh, so the, it basically has three parameters, uh, default, granted, or denied. Okay, so if you allow it, it says permission as granted. So I'm taking uh, the response in the permission uh, any object. And uh, <coughs> so if you allow it, it's going to say granted, else it's going to say uh, permission is denied. Okay, now if you allow it, it's going to, uh, you know, get the, get the token for uh, this user account. Okay. So to do that, you have to create a messaging uh, object here. So I've done it uh, like this. So messaging equals Firebase dot uh, messaging. Now, when you do that, uh, you should be able to use the get token uh, function of this uh, uh, messaging object. And then you'll say in curly braces, uh, vapp uh, ID key, and that's going to be the ID key. Now to connect the dots from where you will get this ID, uh, you go here and uh, go to your project settings. So just to connect dots guys, uh, that was your project ID. That is your app ID. You scroll down. That was the command I was telling you will get it all the time. If you click on CDN, that's the version I was uh, working on and the JavaScript type. Now our case was cloud messaging. 
so that was basically the VAP ID key. Okay. So if you don't see it here, in your case, you might have to generate one. It's like generating a client secret. Just create one. It's going to be uh, just this. Okay. Yeah, just copy it and uh, you have to paste that key here. Now, once you do that, now this line is basically responsible for generating and getting the token. Okay, so you can see here it says uh, get token. If you get a token, then log the token. I'm just logging it on the dev tools while I was debugging the solution. And then I was also showing it on my HTML, right? Well, that's the way I was doing it. Else, if I don't get the permission, usually I don't get that in, uh, you know, browsers and all. Uh, so I just say permission is denied and I update that token with this information. Okay, now that is one thing. Uh, I hope it is clear, but uh, if it is not, don't don't worry about that. I just just do uh, for especially for uh, NAP developers, guys. Uh, don't worry about JS and everything. Just do the things as it is, and it should be working fine. I've just taken a very easy example. Okay. Now, if you if you want to test it on your local host, the next command that you have to run on your terminal is Firebase space serve. Now, once you do that, you should be able to get a local host uh, running for you with. Uh, I think by default is 5000, but if it's not, it will get a different uh, ID for that. Okay, so you run the browser, you should be able to run this website. In my case, what I have done, uh, because I have to use it with the, the SaaS model of BC. Uh, yeah, cannot pause. What I have done here is I have created a storage account on my Azure. And in this storage account, I have created a static website. So again, just to create a new storage account, just type storage account here. Just click on here, just create new basic information. And that's next, next and create it. Okay. Nothing, nothing uh, specific that I've done guys again, uh, right? Uh, you can host your website on a different uh, platform as well. In my case, I thought Azure was one of the easiest ones. So I just did it very quickly. Okay. So by default, it is disabled. Just make it enable. And it's going to ask you two questions. One is what is your index document name? So, uh, and uh, that was index.html. And that is exactly the same file name that I was talking here, right? And what is your error document path? So it, it basically needs two uh, HTML files. Okay, so that was my uh, error document uh, uh, HTML file, right? Uh, so once you do that, uh, the next thing is that you have to save it. After saving it, uh, in your VS code, you have to download the Azure storage uh, extension. I have done that. And uh, once I refresh it, I get this BC notification extension uh, storage in my case, right? Uh, again, don't make things too complex, guys. Uh, I know it, it might uh, get uh, difficult at first time. So host the website anywhere you want to. It just has to be a public URL for SaaS because SaaS cannot access your local host. Okay. Now, once you do that, uh, come back to your file. Okay. Just click anywhere in your project, right click. And then there has to be an option for this deploy to static website via Azure storage. Now, once you do that, it's going to ask you that which storage account. And that is going to be the new storage account if you haven't created it yet, there yet. Uh, or if uh, you have already created it, it's going to be an existing storage account. In my case, it's a BC notification. Okay, now once I do that, it's going to ask me a couple of questions. Are you sure? Blah, blah, blah. Then your website should be uploaded here. And that is going to be your, the URL of your website. Okay, I'm not sure that if I can change it, but uh, it works for now. So I'm, I'm going to be okay to that. Uh, just to be clear, if you want to explore more with the, the storage account, uh, if you go here and try to view your files, then uh, 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 somewhere in the static website itself, you should be able to see them. Or maybe in the blob inventory too. Yeah, there you go, web. So there you can see the files that it is needed, right? It, it's not taking your uh, node modules, okay? You basically need all these files and uh, these files are, uh, you know, only thing that it is needed to run that website. Okay, so what next? 
let's consider an example that I am I am a different user and I want to run this example or I want to subscribe to this notification you can put this thing on your uh, role center uh, initialization or <coughs> if you are a new user you want to subscribe to customer notification or push notifications you can say customer so what I have done at least you can do it in a different way uh, say push notification and let's say your uh, token is blank right so if it is blank you go and say get token now get token in a fancy way is basically opening the same page you do subscribe shown it as a message copy it paste it here and then send there you go all right now there are a couple of limitations with this as well okay and let's let's come to that why i have users used a different platform uh, for running this uh, service worker thing that is because with the uh, business central we don't have any option for uh, you know uh, running javascript other than control add-in now if i try to use control add-in business central basically embeds that control add-in in an iframe okay uh when i say iframe it it's basically because you are running you're trying to run a different website under the frame of business center it's like you cannot open google inside business center you cannot open facebook inside business center because these these sites have their uh, own security on top of that business central has their own security so every time when you try to get the token or you try to register a service worker it basically takes this url okay now uh and maybe i am wrong here but uh, business central doesn't basically takes that uh, service worker thing into consideration you cannot uh, register a service worker with, with business with business central but uh, i'm i'm seeing this in the log uh, from past couple of times that uh, it says service worker registration succeeded but to be fair it's not the service worker of firebase okay it's the basically the same log which gets from business central by default so maybe i'm i'm not sure but they may they might be working on something on that side too okay so uh, that was one of the things and one of the reasons why we need to use a different website okay uh, yeah if you find any workaround around this feel free to uh, deprecate that part where i have run all that uh, index.html thing if not it's not a very big exercise too guys right uh you just do get token to subscribe don't have to be very fancy here because it's just creating a token right you don't really have to be very you know uh, formal or uh, logical here it's a one-time activity right now once you have this in place you have this in place you should be able to send this notification I'll give you a very quick brief of uh, how I have called this notification from Business Central. And to do that, I will take you to my BC extension now. Okay, so that was one of uh, the pages where I was running it. And uh, it was on the customer card. So when I do that, it basically uh, gets to this page. And I'm setting the record ID uh, and the page ID of this page. Okay. Now, once I do the page.run, that's basically the page I was showing you, which is basically sending the notifications, right? Uh, that's the page of get token. Very simple, hyperlink, open that page. And uh, this was basically the code which was sending the push notification right away from that page, okay? Now, let's try to understand what we did here. So, to send a notification, you need to create a JSON request, something of this sort. So I'll put it on my right and I put this on my left. Okay, so that is going to be your URL of uh, type of method post. And in the header, you have to pass, pass two headers. One is content type as application slash JSON. And another one is going to be the authorization. And in authorization, you have to say key is equal to and there is a big long key. From where did I get that? you have to go back to your video uh, not video the firebase uh, login and this is your uh, key okay under project setting cloud messaging because you're going to use cloud messaging you have to copy this and uh, yeah once you do that and you go here and say this you send it from here you should be getting a notification as well 
not getting one maybe the token is expired um you know what i'll try to generate one here so i'd say get token subscribe copy go back to my postman let's hope this works it says okay there you go okay my maybe it's because my business central was already open all right so that is that is one thing okay you can you can do that uh, from postman itself by for, for testing it now let's come back to how i did that on business central so first things first i have to construct a url or maybe http request and uh, that is going to be my url that is going to be the post request i'm sending uh that's my authorization header okay and before doing all this you can see there is a parameter for json text I go to the calling of this function right here so that function was basically getting called up so it's also constructing a json so that was the j object and simply dot add to as the token and a notification as append notification that's going to be a different body entirely like this now there's a reason why i was also getting uh, you know uh, uh, if you have noticed that every time i click, try to click a url it's basically going to somewhere else and redirecting itself so the reason for this is because uh, every time you open a URL from here, uh, it's going to take you to the host. In my case, the host is the website that I have just uh, created on as a static page. So I have done one more thing, and that is why I was saying in the beginning I might have cheated uh, in some sense, is that I've used used a redirect logic. Uh, there's an extension by default available with uh, in the app uh, on the browser which can help you in redirecting your uh, URL. So I've redirected that, that URL to Business Central and to any specific URL that I am passing it to, okay? So it's, it's still dynamic. You can uh, show it to different uh, uh, page itself, like an item or any other thing. So in summary, what it's doing is it's taking the URL uh, while opening it. It's also trying to open it on the host on which the HTML is loaded, but as soon as it's get loaded, it's also redirecting it, redirecting it to, you, to the URL that I am sending it here. All right, so that is one thing. Now, apart from that, uh, just to keep a relevant example, I have also added that as part of the workflow responses. Okay, so there is a reason why that every time you click on send approval, you are uh, having that information. That is because I have added this as a response to my workflow library. So I was I was just trying to show you the implications that you can also do here. So you get a response here. Uh, you can say send notification uh, based on the type of record ref you, you're getting. I've handled customer and sales for now. That's one of the messages that you can uh, construct. And then you can call this function send notification URL. And then the same function notification management dot send. Okay, so it's going to pop up that message. And if I go to my business central, just to show you very quickly on my workflows, I have added it on my customer and order approvals. So I go here, you can see there is a custom response saying send push notification. Again, you can you can make it dynamic, right? Uh, store a uh, token somewhere, and then you can when you when you select the response here, you can in the bottom of responses, you can ask the title and the message, right? These are some of the things that you can do. All right, so yeah, guys, that is pretty much it, and uh, I hope uh, this might get interesting to you guys, and uh, yeah. Uh, feel free to comment on uh, or share your thoughts about this feature. Thank you for your watching this and uh, I hope you a good day and a happy new year again.